Yo, so what do Yo-Yo Ma, Marcel Mule, Marshall Royal, Whitney Houston, and James Galway all have in common? A beautiful expressive vibrato. What's up everybody? I'm Demarius Jackson and in today's video we're gonna be talking about vibrato. So my goal for today's video is by the end of it give you a couple of different exercises and techniques for you to be able to develop an expressive vibrato. But first I want to stress the importance of listening and this is a universal topic in all music. Uh, if you can have a good sound in your ear or a good concept in your ear of what you would like your vibrato to sound like, uh, then that will do wonders for your playing, more so than you'll probably ever believe. So the first suggestion would be to find a musician that you like and just listen to them, get saturate your mind uh, with the sound of that vibrato and try to emulate it at first. And once again, you'll be surprised with where you go with that. But now let's get to those exercises. So first things first, I think of vibrato in two different uh, aspects, if you will. I think of the frequency and I think of the width. So when it comes to frequency, I'm talking about the amount of uh, pulsations, if you will, between beat to beat. So if I have beat one here and beat two here, or I might be backwards because mirror image, beat one here and beat two here, how many dilations or pulsations, I guess is the right word, that you have from beat to beat? the number of those, that's your frequency. So here we are, here's your whiteboard uh, example of frequency. So if we have beat one here, beat two here, and we'll have this straight line represent a straight tone, we're actually talking about the amount of pulsations that we have going, and imagine that was equal, <laughs> going from beat to beat. So that's frequency. Either we have it going a lot of times, and I could draw those closer, or we can have it going two times or as many times as uh, essentially that you want to be expressive in your music. And when we're talking about width, we're actually talking about how wide your vibrato will be. You're actually manipulating the pitch of a certain tone that you have that's going steady, you're actually manipulating the pitch to go down. And so when we're talking about width, we're actually talking about how wide it is, whether it's a really narrow vibrato or a really wide vibrato. And once again, if we're talking about width, I'll have my beat one here, beat two here like we had last time. This will be our straight tone. We're talking about either a really narrow vibrato once again, I'm trying to make this as even as possible or really wide vibrato. So hopefully that you kind of get that uh, image in your mind, whether we're going e or ya, 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 ya uh, sound kind of in your head, if you will. So what I would do to practice this is actually set my metronome. Uh, we'll say quarter notes equals 50, very, very slow. Uh, anywhere between 50 and 60 beats per minute. Hopefully that is on there. That's really bad. There we go. <laughs> and what I like to do is practice uh, pulsations, uh, my frequency anywhere between one all the way going up to six, if we will. So obviously what I would like to do is have a really, really, uh, I consider this a wide vibrato because I'm only going one. If this is my click, I'm going yeah, 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 for two, yeah, 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 three, triple it, triple it, four, 
1 a and uh, 2 a and uh, 5. I like to say hippopotamus. I know it uh, might be a little bit strange, but hippopotamus, hippopotamus, hippopotamus. And 6, I do two triplets. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. Let's move to my saxophone for a demonstration. All right, so here we go. So what I'll do is I have my metronome on 50 here and I'll go two beats of one, 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 and two, and triple it, triple it, one a and a, two a and a, hippopotamus, hippopotamus, triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. And I'll try to exaggerate the vibrato probably a little bit more than I usually do so we can hear it. I'm not exactly too sure how it'll come across, but this is all a work in progress. So here we go. Ready? Yeah, and that, that sex tuplet one was a little bit late, but hopefully you can kind of hear the difference. So right there, I'm more so worried about the frequency. So the number of pulsations from beat to beat and I'll need to work on that myself and get it really, really even. And so from there, what I'll do is once I have it down, one, two, three, four, five, and six, I'll randomly scatter those numbers around. So here's my board from earlier. I, I did it in order. So for instance, I'll say, let's go five, three, uh, one, two, and six. So we'll have those in a random order. And you can put them in whatever order that you like and try to go from one number as smoothly as possible. So here we go. All right, so there we go. It goes by pretty quickly. I would almost suggest even taking it from this tempo and slowing it down even more from there. Uh, realistically, I'm gonna start working on this myself. If you wanna follow along later with me, I'll probably do a follow-up video later on to see the progress on it. But maybe start at uh, 40 instead of the 50 or 60, unless you're really, really uh, confident and accurate with your rhythms. And then you go on from there. And then also what you wanna do is play with the width of it. So the width is uh, one of those really, really personal things. Once again, like I said earlier in the video, if you have a player uh, that you love their sound, and it doesn't even have to be somebody on your own instrument. Uh, I like vocalists myself because I like to copy uh, the sound of a singer. Uh, but All right, so the next technique is a little unconventional and quirky, uh, but what you need to do is find a ball. So I have one of my son's uh, kind of dirty tennis balls here. I think it, last time I did this with a student, I used like a ping pong ball or, or a golf ball or something that bounces on the floor. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop this ball and then every time it hits the floor, <laughs> guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna play your vibrato on those beats. Once again, you're gonna use your width at your discretion, but your frequency is actually gonna go with the tennis ball. Let's give this a shot. All right, so here we go. I'm gonna try to do this with one hand. I need a trusty assistant. Where's my wife at? Here we go. Really, really quick, but let's try it one more time. All right, so there we have it. Those are just a couple of exercises you can do to learn how to control your vibrato. So what I want you not to do or not really to uh, focus on is actually playing your vibrato in a mechanical manner. So it's a little bit contradictory to this video because we're learning how to play accurately and precisely and you know, kind of metrically. However, listen to your favorite singers and your favorite musicians or whatever it may be and emulate that. We want to learn how to have control so we can let go and let the music flow throughout us and out of our uh, you know, horn or whatever it is that you play and be able to express ourselves musically with having control and not control. Hopefully you know what I mean. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe. Happy New Year to everybody out there. It's 2020. We're all gonna do some big things. I'm looking forward to it and I'll catch you in the next video. Out.